Hello everyone, Charles Watts here. Welcome back to Inside Arsenal. It is Saturday. Well, actually, sorry, it's not. It's actually Friday. I'm pre-recording this show. It's going out on Saturday. So by the time you're watching it or listening to it, it is Saturday. But I'm pre-recording it on a Friday evening because I'm out and about on Saturday. I just wouldn't have time to be able to do it. I've got to take my children to football first thing in the morning and I'm taking my son to uh, the Silverstone Museum uh, for a late Christmas present type thing so I wouldn't have any time to do it basically I'm trying to take my mind away from uh what's to come on Sunday in the North London derby so I'm keeping myself very very busy on Saturday but I wanted to put a show out of course because it is such a huge game on Sunday so I'm pre-recording it on Friday so if something massive has happened overnight on Friday evening and I'm not talking about it in this video that is why it's because it's pre-recorded Friday afternoon and I've missed it but I desperately wanted to put something out anyway today because it's such a huge game. We've had since my last video as well, like today we've had Mikel Arteta's press conference. He's been speaking about the game and Postacoglu has been speaking about the game. We'll go over the predicted 11s for both sides today. The latest team news, plenty to discuss. You guys have been getting involved as well, talking about what you want from Mikel Arteta in terms of his team selection for this game. So lots to discuss. But before we get on to Tottenham, just wanted to discuss this story from Sammy Mottbell, fantastic reporter, Sammy, from the uh, from the Daily Mail. Uh, he is reporting that Arsenal have opened preliminary talks with Gabriel over an improved contract. Early indications are positive, but immediate focus remains on title race. Still has over two years left, so no rush to accelerate the talks. Now, I've retweeted a story from Sammy, and I'll drop it into the description below if you want to click on it and give it a read. And yeah, really happy to hear this. I mean, it makes absolutely perfect sense. Gabriel was kind of the first of the batch that got renewed. It feels like a long time ago now because so many players have had their contract renewed since Gabriel had his one done. I think it was 2022 or something like that when he had his his deal done. Um, and so you've almost like, you've got, you've got starting again now. You've got through everyone that you're starting again. You're going to the back of the line for the ones you renew first of all. And Gabriel absolutely should be tied down. He's still got over two years left on his contract. So it's no, as Sammy reports, you know, no immediate rush, but... You know, all the talk about Saliba being one of the best young centre-backs in the world, it can easily be forgotten just how good Gabriel is and how important it is to keep him at the club. Now, last summer, there was a lot of interest from Gabriel. You know, I've, weirdly, I was writing, I'm writing at the moment the updated version of my book that's going to come out in the summer, the paperback version. And today, I was writing a little bit about the summer and the interest from Saudi Arabia and Gabriel and how he was out of the team at the first part of the season. And while Mikel was obviously saying it was a, uh, a tactical tweak it, it definitely was more to it than that you know there was strong interest from Saudi Arabia Gabriel's head was understandably turned a little bit by that interest given the unbelievable amount of money that was being waved not just in front of his face but all footballers faces last summer from clubs in Saudi Arabia and it wouldn't surprise me at all if something like that happens again this summer you know Saudi Arabian money is not going to go anywhere it's still going to be around they're still going to try and pluck the best players they can away from Europe and Gabriel is one of the best defenders there is in Europe and you know it wouldn't surprise me at all basically as I said if they come knocking again this summer so trying to get him tied down to a long-term deal is absolutely the right decision for Arsenal to do as again Sammy says look we're in the middle of a title race at the moment so it's not the most essential thing but the fact that these talks have been open and they are discussing things sounds like you know really good planning from Edu and the and the contracts team and hopefully you know the early positive signs continue to progress that way and that deal will be done relatively quickly because yeah as I said Saliba gets a lot of the headlines deservedly so because he's such a fantastic player William Saliba but Gabriel next to him equally as impressive you know I have Gabriel ahead of Saliba in terms of my player of the season this season I think he's been absolutely fantastic and uh yeah absolutely deserves and should be rewarded with a new contract relatively quickly. Well, let's move on to the big North London derby now. Honestly, it makes me feel ill just talking about it. I'm dreading Sunday morning, waking up, making my way to the stadium. I will be there to make my way to the stadium. It's just never a nice experience. It's just that one game that I barely even want to sit through. I just want to know what the score is, <laughs> you know, all the, the drama before it and it just may I just feel too I get too nervous from the North London derby. I hate it. Even when Arsenal was so much better than Spurs, I used to hate it because the fear of losing to them was just so strong. But now obviously Spurs are a much better team and we've seen Arsenal lose to Spurs a fair amount recently. And yeah, oh, just 
and this one especially given what's at stake it's <laughs> i'm dreading sitting through this 90 minutes fingers crossed it comes out the right way for arsenal well mikhail has been speaking about the game and arsenal's title chances at his press conference yesterday at the show realty center he was asking how do you feel about the title chances now he says look we are there we have to look at ourselves and try and perform in the best possible way to win our matches and i can't wait to see what happens that's what we discuss it sounds a bit repetitive but it's what we have to do. Asked about his team's performances in April and the result, results in April, which have been largely good. Obviously, you've got that one outlier in the middle of it, the defeat to Aston Villa in the Premier League. But other than that, Arsenal won all their league games. He says, look, it's been great. Not just the results, but the performances as well. We had one big one in the, in the last London derby against Chelsea. And now we had another big one. I'm sure if we're going to do it, we're going to have to beat Spurs as well. And I think he's right. You know, Normally, away from home, North London derby, you take a draw. It's what always my my view of it has always been since growing up. It's like you look at those two fixtures each season, you draw the away game, win the home game, and you are very, very happy with those two results in the North London derby. But I think given Arsenal's position in the league, given the fact that Manchester City just basically, you know, they might slip up once. It's doubtful, but they might slip up once. But to expect them to slip up twice, which they would have to do if Arsenal don't win all of their games, it's just not going to happen. Realistically, it's not going to happen. You can never rule anything out in football, but you know, history tells us that it's not going to happen. So they do have to beat Spurs. That's what's on the line this weekend. And that's what makes it such a huge, huge game. Not just for Arsenal, but for Spurs as well. Of course, they get, they're still going for top four. And if they're going to continue to sort of keep the pace of Aston Villa, then they're going to need to win um, at the weekend. Mikel was asked about the squad and the current sort of shape of it at the moment. He says... Um, and uh, oh, sorry, before I get to that, he was asked about the squad and if he thinks that Arsenal are now sort of set to be able to compete for the title season after season. He says, I hope so, but that's something you're going to have to show it every season, every game. And in this league, that's extremely difficult to do. We've done it two years in a row, but we're not satisfied with that. We want to win it and we're going to do everything that we can to win it. If we do win it, we'll try and win it again. If we don't, for sure, we'll try it again on whether it, um, he sees it as progress this season. If Arsenal don't go on and win the title, he says, I'm not thinking about that at the moment. I'm just thinking about how we're going to win it. Whatever happens this season, Arsenal have made progress in my mind. Absolutely 100%. They're a better side now than they were last season. They're better equipped now to win the title than they were last season. And that my opinion on that is absolutely not going to change in whatever happens over the next four games. If Arsenal finish second, if they finish third, they're still a better team than they were last season. And I would still be a lot more confident going into next season that they will win the league or have a good chance of winning the league than uh, than I did last time. I think they're continuously improving. And I think this season shows us that um, 100%. But hopefully, look, hopefully you do go on and win it. And um, But yeah, or it, just in terms of my opinion, I, I think whatever happens, they're a better team. And I don't think anything's going to change my mind on that. In terms of Arsenal squad going into... Um, the North London derby says the availability. We've mentioned it before. It's going to be something key. It's true that apart from urine, we're going to be very close to having everybody available. And that's a huge boost that elevates the training sessions, the competition between the players and to pick the right lineup to change the game. It's something really important on urine timber, possibly being available for this game. Of course, he did play in the under 21s on Monday night, scored on his return in that game against Blackburn, only played 45 minutes for the under 21s. Uh, on him potentially being involved in the squad this weekend. He said, we have to make that decision tomorrow after the training session. He's very close. I don't know if this is too early, but he's very close now. I'd be surprised if Tim's in the squad for this one, because if you want Arsenal, if everyone's fit at the moment, Arsenal have a lot of options. And, you know, some players are going to have to be left out, are going to be disappointed. They're not going to be in the match day squad. And I think given how important this game is, if you don't have full confidence in a player who you have on the bench being able to go on and influence the game, then there's no point in him being there. And I just don't think after one 45-minute showing for the under-21s that Arteta would be tempted in any circumstance to throw Timber on against Tottenham. So I'd be surprised. It'd feel like just wasting a place in the squad. And when you have fit and available players who... Um, are probably ahead of him in terms of their fitness, and I think they'd have to be included. So I'd be surprised if Timber's in the squad for the weekend. Right, moving on to predicted 11s now uh, for the game. I'm going to go through Arsenal's now, then go through Tottenham's afterwards. So this is what I've gone for for Arsenal. I'm saying unchanged from the team that played so well and beat Chelsea 
five nil on Tuesday night. So Ryan goal, White Saliba, Gabriel and Tommy Asu. Midfield three of Party, Odegaard and Rice. And then the front three of Saka, Havertz and Trossard. Obviously, there's a few decisions Mikel's going to have to make. We've been speaking about him in the last couple of days in the last episodes that I've done, you know, most notably in midfield with Thomas Partey. Does he keep his place or do you bring Jorginho back in? What happens at left, left-hand left side in terms of Trossard and Martinelli? Trossard obviously been playing very, very well recently. Martinelli a little bit off form, but you look at the way this game might play out and the way Tottenham do leave themselves a little bit exposed down the flanks. Maybe Martinelli in transition, in transition will be would be a really sort of potent weapon for Arsenal. And then what happens at left back? But even what I was saying about Martinelli, I still think Trossard probably gets a nod. And I think that is probably the right decision from Mikel. And it certainly leaves him with plenty of options off the bench to come on and change the game. I thought this was a really good comment here from Matt Thomas, who says, um, it was in response to sort of Trossard or Martinelli debate. And he said, we thought Martinelli's pace would be the difference maker in behind against Bayern, how wrong we were. Trossard has consistently demonstrated he is the best option from the start off the left-hand side. Offers more link-up play and can tuck in as left eight, dovetailing with Declan Rice as seen against Chelsea. Martinelli's inability to play without Jesus and Zinchenko means that we need to consider our strongest combinations and get them on the field. The Trossard-Rice-Tommy left-hand side is superior in helping us control the game. Additionally, Trossard and Havertz, when they play together, often score and offer a nice balance up top, particularly if we aren't opting for an over-enthusiastic press. You then go on to talk about Martinelli and um, and things like that. And you're, interestingly, at the end, yeah, they say he could have switched to the right wing for Martinelli, allow him to simplify his game a bit and opt for cutbacks, crosses and drive in two by the line. Yeah, it's an interesting point there about Martinelli potentially being an, an option for the right-hand side in uh, if, in case Saka isn't, you know, isn't fit or something like that. It's, so, you know, he could certainly do that. I do prefer him on the left, but he could certainly do that. Um, but I thought the comments there about the, the starting 11 and why Martinelli should be picked ahead of Trossard, I thought that was really, you know, really spot on from Matt there. And it's why, you know, I'd be playing him on the left-hand side. And it's why I think Mikel will probably go with him as well. So from a Tottenham point of view, Ange Postacoglu had his press conference yesterday as well. He confirmed that Pedro Porro and Richarlison are both fit to play. And they've been training, been good in training apparently this week. So they're both going to be available for him this weekend. He, obviously, adogi has been ruled out injured. I think he ruled out Oliver Skip as well. So pre- predicted 11-wise for Tottenham for tomorrow's game. Going Vicario in goal, a back four of Porro, Romero, Van der Ven and Davies. Then a two midfield of Saar and Basuma. And then the Kulisevsky, Madison and Timo Werner behind Son playing as the central striker. You look at that team, you know where their strengths are. You've got the creativity of Madison in behind Son. Son's such a brilliant finisher. Doesn't take many opportunities to score. And so you want to limit that. You know, Gabriel and Saliba are going to have to really try and try and limit his opportunities in front of goal because you know, sometimes Son doesn't even need a half chance. He's a bit of an XG monster, Son, when it comes to his finishing. And um, yeah, it'll be interesting. The predicted 11 there has got Kulisevsky on the right, but it could well be Brennan Johnson, although he's been very good for Spurs off the bench. He's made a big impact, Brennan Johnson, off the bench at times this season. So I wonder if he might, you know, that might be what Postacoglu will go for. And if he does need to change things up and look to stretch the game in the second half, you bring on the pace of... Um, Brennan Johnson, him and Werner, you know, it's a really pacey out wide when you've got Johnson on one side and Werner on the other side. And against a tiring defence, that could cause Arsenal some problems. So I'd probably go with Kulisewski as the pick, but it wouldn't surprise me at all if it is Johnson as well. So that's just uh, predicted 11 for Spurs. Vicario, Porro, Romero, Van der Ven, Davies, Basuma, Saar, Madison, Kulisewski, Werner and Son. Moving on to some of your questions and comments now before we wrap this one up for today. Anthony has got in touch and says Arteta should maintain the first 11 use against Chelsea. Maybe start Martinelli over Trossard. How are you now? Says, hey, Charles, I'd love to see Raya, White, Saliba, Gabriel, Timber, Party, Rice, Odegaard, Saka, Havertz and Martinelli with a big appearance by Jesus, Trossard and Jorginho. I, ju- I just don't think it's realistic to have Timber in the squad, let alone in the starting 11. It would be, I mean, imagine throwing him back in after just playing 45 minutes for the under-21s in the last eight months, throwing him into a North London derby up against the pace that Tottenham have on the flanks. It's just it's just not going to happen. So uh, I don't think that's an option for the weekend. Um, she shows 6666 says, it would be crazy dropping Trossard for Martinelli. Yeah, I get Martinelli is faster, but his finishing has been terrible and Trossard has been our best finisher. He unlocked big games for us like Porto, Chelsea and Wolves. Why would you drop him? He has to start. Yeah, and you're certainly not the only person 
who has been commenting like that. And uh, I agree. You know, I think it is as much as I like Martinelli, as much as I do think he might well still have a big part to play in this game off the bench in the second half. I think from the starting 11, you've got to go on form on a game like this. You can't be taking chances on a player who's clearly a little bit out of form, hoping that his pace might unlock something for you. I think you have to turn to the form players in this situation. And Trossard is absolutely one of the form players right now. Uh, Noman95 says, Hey, Charles, I hope Arteta sticks with the latest 11 against Spurs. Parties, dynamic and physicality will be key. My prediction is a 4-2 win for Arsenal. Also hoping Saka will be on the score sheet 4-2. I would take that. Well, to be honest, I'd take any score <laughs> on Sunday. 4-2 would certainly be an exciting one. Alish Baz says, Hi, Charles. Jorginho has done his part for, for us this season. Thomas Party needs to do his part now and see out the remaining games of the season. The fluidity and balance he brings to the starting lineup is a no-brainer. It felt like Declan Rice drove with the ball a lot more against Chelsea. Yeah, I agree. I think he did. I think he did against Wolves when Party came on for that last 20 minutes as well. Really changed Declan Rice's game, I thought, in that Wolves away game. And he carried that on against Chelsea. So thank you very much for your comment there. And Teta98 just simply says no reason to change the starting lineup. That is a very popular opinion going into Sunday, I have to say. So thank you very much for all of you guys for getting in touch and that is it from me today everyone thank you for your time as always whether you're watching on youtube or listening on podcast i do appreciate it like i said at the start i will be at spurs tomorrow I'll be traveling up there uh dreading it as i said but i will be there don't think i'll be putting out a video in the morning ahead of that game because it's an early kickoff only 2 p.m kickoff so i'll probably wait but i will do a video after of course player ratings and summing up what well, fingers crossed will be another fantastic win for Arsenal in this exciting title race. So until then, everyone, have a fantastic Saturday. Enjoy your weekend as best as you can, despite all the nerves ahead of Sunday. And I'll speak to you very, very soon. Bye-bye.